They started with an awesome demo of the HoloLens that probably is nothing like reality, but... That's the yeah, issue with some of their demos of the HoloLens. <laughs> let's talk about HoloLens. So, they so, so they, they, have, they show this. They've got, hey, we've got a rig that will let you see the HoloLens. And they've got a red camera with some, a lot of gizmos on it. And then some guy comes out and he makes a fist and a, uh, a gun forwards around. Hey, well, we can show this. The guy, by the way, well chosen, looks exactly like one of us. He's wearing a hoodie. He looks uh, a little different than me. Doesn't look like you. <laughs> looks like one of us uh f you know fat gamers and oh. uh and and immediately through the beautiful wood paneled pacific northwest walls come spiders and robots and he starts shooting them and they appear to be actually coming through the wall and this is uh, what i really like about augmented reality is you you actually the game becomes part of the room you're in which i think is really cool but this is they're showing this thing as if this guy is seeing all around him in the whole room that's not the hollow ones we've seen. Not no. the one I saw a few months ago, although yeah. um, they haven't released it yet, so it's possible that's gotten better since then. That was the news. Uh, it it has, will be Q1 it for the dev kit. Lot. For the $3,000 dev kit. So you think, Robert, with your inside, because uh, you worked at Microsoft, you know those guys I, well. and. I know people who work uh, are working on the HoloLens team, and I know the guy who invented some of the patents that got sold to uh, Microsoft, uh, Ralph Osterhout. Uh, who built uh, who built ODG yeah. this li little company yeah. which is right across the street from the ballpark in San Francisco and he's building been building military glasses for a decade he he was one of the key people who built the night vision goggle um the the problem and and the press keyed in on it is the viewing angle on HoloLens that that video makes it seem like the monsters are all the way around you and that you are perceiving them that way as they would Not be true. in virtual reality not true. Yeah. The, there's a screen in front of you, which is like a 55-inch screen a few feet from you. And it it has a small viewing area. And the rest of it is blank. And this is the problem that they're going to have to fix. And I don't believe they're going to be able to soon. Uh, uh, now, Osterhout, once he sold those patents to Microsoft, started over. And he's gotten the screen up to about a 75-inch screen. But it still is a screen. It still has edges on the side of it. And he, he keeps hinting that he has a way to make it a little bit more wrap around. So is it BS uh, that Microsoft did this demo? and They had no point in the demo did they say, oh, well, by the way, it doesn't look at all like this. They have a history of kind of doing that, which yeah. I, I think yeah. is dangerous yeah. for them because HoloLens is really cool. And if, if they yeah. raise people's expectations even above its actual coolness, people might be disappointed. There, you're absolutely yeah. right. Microsoft is always giving people this promising things that they can't deliver. And then what causes what happens in people's psychology is that we end up with expectational debt. I would be completely happy with a small screen that I can interact with various things that might be helpful to me if I'm doing anatomy, if I'm looking at the internals of the brain to be able Bingo. to interact with that would be phenomenally cool. And I would love it. But People end up expecting something, and the only way that we know if we're actually happy with something or not is what we expected and then what actually delivered. And so, unfortunately, what Microsoft often does is they show lots of cool things so that they get great press, but then people that have never actually tried HoloLens, so they don't know that this is completely different than what they get, are exceptionally disappointed with that, even though it's massively cool and it's a first-gen device, we shouldn't expect that much from it. But... Microsoft, yeah. unfortunately, doesn't understand the psychology of what they put out there that they can't deliver on will make people actually very angry and very frustrated. Well, and let's be honest, um, we're going to start hearing about this company called Magic Leap, mm -hmm. which Google has invested half a billion dollars in, and I hear they're about to uh, get a, another round of funding. Ted Shilwitz, I, I went down to 20th Century Fox and v visited with Ted Shilwitz, who's the futurist there at the movie company. And he said that Magic Leap is Google's first trillion dollar idea. And he says, where where HoloLens has a screen in front of you, Magic Leap has no screen. And therefore, if if Magic Leap, even though we, we know that Magic Leap is three to eight years away, if Magic Leap starts showing off demos before Microsoft can really start getting a market going for HoloLens, they're going to just 
Osborne the whole market and everybody's going to wait until the Magic Leap comes You must out. be wearing something with Magic Leap. How are they going to project yes, those you have images? a screen. You, you have a screen, but it's projecting into your eye using a very unique uh, optical system. Uh. I don't know exactly how it works, but everybody who's seen it, I, I, I've talked to five people so far who've seen it and spent a lot of time in Fort Lauderdale seeing Magic Leap. They say it's absolutely mm -hmm. mind-blowing. Well, this is why AR is more exciting to me, frankly, than um, VR, because you're still in your world. It can be a yeah. user interface. It's more than just gaming. VR is really about gaming but uh, or tourism yeah. or something. But this but, is this could be a new UI. This could be, And I understand why Microsoft would be interested in it for that reason alone. The, the problem is, uh, and I just interviewed Jack, um, uh, Jack, 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 who's Jack? The, the co-founder of Oculus Rift, Ch Jack McCauley. He was the chief engineer at Oculus and now is running a lab at Cal Berkeley to uh, uh, figure out how to tell where your body is in these virtual worlds. Right. So he's building new sensor mm -hmm. worlds. He says the software, and I, he's not the only one, I, the software for AR is going to be much harder uh. because of this expectation problem. Because if, if I want to look at my desk and say, put... Um, uh, Monopoly game on my desk and have it appear. The software to do that is way harder than to put me in a virtual world and have me play Monopoly right. in a completely virtual world. Right. right. And so our expectations are going to be much higher with AR and they're going to be harder to meet uh, technologically. You're going to have to have faster uh, GPUs, faster. Uh, uh, systems than we ha have the capabilities to build right now. This is why Oculus and Valve have to be tethered to a big ass yeah. PC. Have you played I, with the uh, new Mattel Viewmaster? <laughs> no. This no, is, but I have. It's nice I to have pick up this is what you want. It's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, cardboard is really cool and cardboard starts at 15 bucks. This is the the yeah, this is a $30 uh device. Um, I, it's hard to describe, and like all of these, very hard to demo, but we, we demoed it earlier. In fact, I think in our promo, you'll see it. What happens is uh, you can buy additional software, but when you get the starter pack, this disc, you put this disc on the ground, and it somehow interacts with the viewer. You put your phone, and you still, it's like cardboard. You still have to have a phone, but it works with a lot of phones. I tried it with a Nexus 6. And when you look through the viewer at this disc, you see animals on it, and trees, and you pick up the disc, they're floating on it. It is definitely an AR experience. It's very hard to describe. This is a toy for kids that's 30 bucks. Yeah. Um, so gonna, there's, there's also the 3D coloring books from Crayola where you can color these specific pages, and then you take a look at it through your iPad or your phone, and the creatures that you've colored are actually now in 3D oh, and kind cool. of moving around. It's kind of like Osmo, isn't it? That's it's the very one cool. that, yeah. So I, I think that there are we're nibbling around the edges of this big experience, this big AR virtual reality experience. Yeah. But cardboard is cheap, and it's here now, and it actually works. I was blown away. I'm looking at this. I'm sure kids would be. And there's animals on this disc, and I can pick it up, and I still see the world around me. It's it's really kind of yeah. a amazing experience.